my name is Jasmine Lopez from the Kahuku Film Club. We're here with go former Governor Ben Cayetano, and I'd like to introduce the rest of our interviewers. Hi, I'm Jody Samler. I'm Lafay Tosafiti. I'm Joseph Chown. Alrighty, and here is our former governor. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you. Alrighty, so thank you very much for sharing your time sure. with us. Yeah. And I know it's crazy with elections coming up. And so we just like to ask you a few questions. Shoot, go ahead. Alrighty, so yeah. for, your, for our first one, um, normally in political media coverage, we learn about the business side of all our candidates. Mm -hmm. So we were just wondering if we could learn a little bit more about you as a person and your interests and hobbies. Okay, uh, uh, I was born in Kalihi. Okay. Um, I'm 72 now. I was born in Kali and uh, uh, I went to Farrington High School. I went to pu public schools, Puhali, uh, Kawakawa, and Farrington. Graduated in 1958. Uh, got married when I was only 18. And later, at age 24, I decided to go back to school. And I moved to the mainland. And then I got my, my degree from uh, UCLA mm -hmm. and later Loyola Law School. Then the day after I graduated from law school, uh, I had been offered a job, and so I, I came home okay. and uh, began my practice of law. And I think maybe the most striking thing about my background is that uh, growing up in Kalihi uh, back then was, uh, you know, it was a, a good place to grow up. People were didn't have much, but we it was a community where we didn't lock our doors because yeah. we knew uh, each other. And uh, back then, it was a very nice uh, place to, to grow up, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. So, now, my hobbies, you said? Yes. Well, I like to read a lot, you know. I, uh, and I think that uh, because I like to read a lot, it's helped me with my writing. I wrote a book. Uh, okay. And uh, as for music, I noticed you had music on the, on, on, on the question. I'm kind of old-fashioned. I like Michael Bublé. You know, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I like the uh, the old classic songs that he that he sings. Uh, locally, uh, I like Amy, okay. Anna Lee, you know, and uh, and also I think that uh, Willie Kay is a fantastic uh, uh, entertainer. So I like those two guys both, bo but I also like uh, uh, the SOS, one of my favorites. Okay. Yeah. You folks are too young, I think, to remember that. Story. <laughs> 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 you don't remember, okay. <laughs> but basically, you know, that's it. So I grew up in a pretty humble uh, surroundings. My father was a waiter at the Audrey Canoe Club. And back then, uh, it was a different society. You folks uh, probably would never believe, but it's the kind of society that uh, people like us here today uh, could not join certain clubs. You could, oh. you could not live in certain areas because they were reserved for only kind of cert certain kind of people, you know. And that's the kind of society that it was. And everyone should study uh, Hawaiian history, especially modern Hawaii history, so that you can learn how uh, how this this state really uh, evolved, you know, and how I think in the end power was shared among many different kinds of people. That's it. <laughs> so, in your own words, what do you think is the best job description of the mayor of Honolulu? Well, the mayor, you know, the mayor of Honolulu is like, it's like being the governor of 80% of the state because 80% of the people live here. And Honolulu, uh, in terms of uh, wealth and, uh, and uh, producing tax revenues, is the major uh, source of uh, tax revenues for, for, for the state among all of the islands. But the mayor has uh, different kinds of responsibilities than, than the governor. Mm -hmm. Basically, the mayor, and the, this is true of the mayors of most con uh, counties here in this state, uh, has responsibility for the fire department, the police department, providing, uh, protecting uh, uh, public safety and uh, protecting uh, you know, uh, us from crime and all of that. Uh, and also uh, the parks, yeah. many of the parks, and the streets and the roads in the city, although the state has some responsibility for that too. Uh, the parks, the parks in the mountains are usually uh, state parks. The parks in the city itself 
our uh, uh, city parks. And so the, the, the mayor's, I think, uh, role is to try and, uh, I, I think a mayor should be uh, one that looks at the bigger picture and he lets his cabinet heads uh, uh, pretty much do the stuff on the ground. Yeah. And the mayor should always be looking at ways to enhance the, the, the economy of the city uh, or you know, make sure that the policies that he proposes to the city council are consistent with uh, our love of the, the, the land yeah. and the environment and respectful of the, the, the local culture. Basically, that's what I think the mayor's responsibility is. Thank you. Okay. What do you think the Keiki need the most in our islands? Well, I think, are you talking about in Kahuko? Or, or just in general? In general? Well, I think it's important to give our, our Keiki a, a, a good quality public education because no matter where they live, you know, I think that the state and the, our schools, our public schools, should prepare our young people to succeed wherever they decide to live. So if you go to uh, London or you go to New York or you go to Los Angeles or any other place on the mainland, we should prepare you here in our public schools to be contributing citizens in those places and even leaders in those places. And the best example is our president, Barack Obama. Of course, he got an education at Punahou. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. But we got a lot of public schools that are, are good, you know. So I think education is, a good quality education is one of the most important things that the government can provide. At home, I think it's important that uh, the homes in which our children grow up in, that we try to help the families as much as possible uh, have a stable environment, provide them with, make sure that uh, they don't go hungry or they don't want for anything. Okay. Um, I had a question. When you were the, f um, the governor, uh, what accomplishment were you most proud of? Well, there were many that I was, you know, that I, that I, I was proud of. Uh, we, we built a new medical school that's in Kakako, and it is uh, uh, a state-of-the-art building. One of the, I think, uh, more modern and beautiful medical schools in the nation. And the reason we we built the medical school, even though the, the university already had the John Burns Medical School in Manoa, is that because I really felt that Hawaii could become uh, a, so a premier healthcare center of the Pacific. Our, our weather here is perfect for rest and recreation and recovery. Uh, you know, it's a mild te uh, 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 temperatures. And our people here, our healthcare providers, our doctors, our nurses, and our, our uh, technicians uh, mirror the Pacific and Asia. Our people look like the Pacific and yeah. Asia. And so we, I felt that uh, this would be a good place for, for people to come because we are an American state and American medicine tends, uh, continues to be uh, seen as the, as the best in the world. So people will, will come here. And that's why I built the medical school. So I was, I was happy with that. And then we built, uh, we, we established the, the uh, State Art Museum. Have you folks been to the State Art, art Museum? Yeah. Mm, Unfortunately, <laughs> it's still only the, the first story that, that's uh, carrying our art. But I, uh, my vision was that one day, that five-story building, which is a beautiful building, would be the equivalent of New York's Metropolitan Art Museum, <laughs> you know, would be yeah. our Metropolitan Museum, but only for local art. We leave to uh, the Academy of Arts and uh, the Contemporary Museum of Art to bring in the, the, the more well-known pieces, the Rembrandts and everything else, you know. Yeah. I wanted a place in that art museum for our local artists. And then it goes back to what you said about how you feel people should learn about the modern or old history of Hawaii. Right. And, you know, and, uh, and we have ter terrific artists here, you know, and, and not only artists, but people who, who sculpture. Uh, and I think it's important that we show that, that to the, the people who come here, not only the people who come here, but our young people, people like you, so you can learn a little bit about, about history. But really, the, the most, uh, I think, uh, uh, satisfying achievement that I that I I felt 
uh, was not when I was governor. It was when I was lieutenant governor, and I established the A-plus after-school program. And I don't know if any of you were in that program. Were you in that <laughs> program? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what it did, it helped uh, working families because uh, before A-plus was, was, uh, was established, you, you, a parent had to come to the school and pick up his or her child and, and take him to the, the Y or wherever the after-school program was. And so what we did by, by establishing the A-plus program was to make it right in the school where the child was. So you eliminated that having to, to, uh, to, to drive, you know, and your, your parent didn't have to come down. And also, uh, the kids were more comfortable in, in sur familiar surroundings. So we started in, uh, I forget, 1989 or thereabouts. And in the first year, we had about 20,000 kids I enrolled. And it eventually, it went up to about 28,000. And in the, in the, uh, the uh, uh, reviews from the parents, parents gave it like a, a, a 96, 97% approval rating because they were happy with it, you know. And w were you satisfied with A+. Plus? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> <He liked it. laughs> Some kids like it better than regular school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was better. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so, um, so like us, since we're students and we're too young to vote, we still want to have an influence on political leaders like you. And so um, what are some things that you did when you were a student that enriched your experience? And well, I, uh, you know, I got to say that when I, when I was a student, I was an older student, and so I, I worked a lot. And but I did keep track of politics, and but I didn't get really involved. I think that uh, that young students like you should really try to reach out to politicians to to, to get them here like this, so that we can yeah. there can be some interaction. Because you know, uh, most politicians, the stuff they're doing now, is going to affect your generation the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, it's not going to affect my generation, you know, uh, it's, we're, <laughs> we're, we're already pretty much established. Yeah. And so you need to be involved and you need to kind of watch out. So if you see, for example, you know, I think uh, uh, there's uh, some issues in, on, on your side of the island uh, that has maybe, say, uh, uh, BYU's project uh, envision mm -hmm. laying. Yeah. If you, whatever you feel about that, you should express to your local politicians, mm -hmm. you know, because they know that one day you're going to vote, and they also know that what they decide will be uh, will affect you more, more than any other uh, generation. And so, I think being involved like this is is, is really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, what kind of skills do you think a mayor needs to have, and what experience do you have? Do I have? <coughs> well, you know, I was a former governor of this state, so. I, uh, I, I manage or I ran or I govern a uh, state government of 50,000 state employees, full-time employees, wow. 15,000 part-time employees, and uh, you know, uh, 18 different departments ranging from the Department of Transportation to the National Guard to the Department of Education. Uh, budget maybe six, seven times the budget of the city of Honolulu. I thought having been doing that job for eight years qualified me to be mayor. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm not running for mayor just because I wanted to run for mayor. The title doesn't mean that much to me. Yeah. I'm running for mayor because I think that I'm concerned about uh, some of the fiscal issues that uh, yeah. the next mayor will face. Cool. Yeah. Currently, there's no youth community center from Kahuku to Waimea. What do you think would be the best location to put a uh, youth community center? You know, I would have to go into the community and talk to people like you. Because frankly, uh, you know, I don't know the community as well as you do. And of course, you know, when you, you, we, we talk to the people in the community, they give us a better idea of what well, maybe where the, the location should be, you know. So I, that's the only answer I can give you right now. I can't say that it should be here or there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, have you experienced any special moments in this past year that shows like a hope for a better future, even in the community and for kids? 
<laughs> Just the islands as a whole, if anything. Um, well, you know, I hmm, that question stumps me because uh, I haven't thought about it for a while. But I think that uh, the hope that I would have is that some good comes out of this election because your future is at stake. And I think it's really important that, uh, uh, you know, the right person is chosen. And I think that one reason I came out of retirement is because I, you know, I felt that uh, there, was, there were things that should be done and I've come out to, to do it. And the response that I've gotten from people has really been uh, uh, overwhelming. The, the enthusiasm is very, very high. And I've been through eight elections in my uh, career. And this one is my ninth. And probably, you know, whether I win or lose, it'll probably be the most satisfying because of the way people have responded. So it's overwhelming in a good way, then. Overwhelming in a good All way, right. you know. <laughs> uh, now, you know, what's going on is uh, there's some bad ways, too, you know. <laughs> but you asked me about hope, and I, that's, that's how I feel. Thank you. Okay, so um, what are one or two values that are most important to you? And can you think of like a Hawaiian or Polynesian word to describe them maybe? Oh, I think that uh, seeking the truth, truth is, is very, very uh, important in our lives, you know, and uh, doing what's right. I guess maybe the word is pono, is it? Yeah. Yeah, pono, doing what's right, you know. Uh, that's how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of our community's biggest challenges, and what would you do to solve them if you had the power? So you're talking about the community in Kahuku? Or just our communities on Oahu. Oh, okay. Well, th I think the biggest challenge is, uh, first of all, uh, to try and, uh, there are many, but uh, try and keep the cost of living down, because this, is, this city is the most, the third most unaffordable city in the nation. Yeah. Wow. Our electricity oh. rates are <laughs> three times the national average. Our gas prices are absolutely high. Uh, the city faces all kinds of uh, billions of dollars uh, 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 that it has to spend to upgrade our sewers, our water system. Um, so uh, we need to do those things, uh, you know, uh, first. But I think that we need to also look to the future yeah. and try to preserve what we think is important. I believe that we have to make sure that we preserve our prime agricultural land, you know, and not, we, we got to build houses for people, uh, but we should do it on the ag land, we got 30,000 uh, acres of ag land here, and we should do it on, on the lands that are, lay fallow because they don't have water, you know, mm -hmm. and, and try to preserve our, our, our ag land. Uh, and uh, we have 4,500 acres only of prime ag land. And so far, the reclassification of two parcels of land, Ho'opili and Core Ridge, is going to wipe out about half of that. Wow. And those are the kind of things that the young people in particular should, should, uh, should think about. Yeah. Because it affects how the island will look in the future, and it affects you know, uh, uh, issues like food sustainability. Yeah. And the other thing about uh, agriculture, and you, you coming from the, the, the rural area, there's a certain ambiance about in the community about a certain lifestyle, you know, yeah. that is not that is not existing where I live. Mm -hmm. You know, where I live is houses all over the place. <laughs> City. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Did I answer your question? Yeah. I, I think I did. Okay. <laughs> where are you now? For many kids, the richest learning comes from the kupuna or our elders. How do you think we can incorporate the kupuna more into our education? I think that learn, you know, uh, some of the best teachers that, uh, that I know are people who don't have as much, they don't have PhDs, you know, <laughs> and they don't have much uh, uh, education. But I think that those who are, who are experienced, uh, experience is very, a very important uh, teacher. And uh, kupunas, uh, they are very knowledgeable and rich in the, in the history of this island and, and our culture. But as you know, the, the, Hawaiian, uh, the, the Hawaiian culture really didn't have a, a written language. 
it was mo most of the the knowledge was passed on through chants and, yeah, and, song. and uh, songs and all of that. And that kind of thing is, uh, if you don't have it in writing, then you, they have it here or here. And I think that's really important because, um, you know, I've seen people with PhDs who don't know how to teach. Yeah. And I, I don't think that uh, that uh, being a good teacher requires uh, a PhD or anything else. You know, I really feel that way because there are some people who are very knowledgeable and can can teach certain things. Uh, I don't think the Kapunas need a PhD to, to teach young people about Hawaiian culture. And so uh, I would, but I'm, as mayor, I couldn't because uh, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, we, the state uh, handles the Department of Education. But one way the city could do it is to, to provide more activities in the parks, for example, or in those kind of programs, enrichment, enrichment programs in which you do use Kapunas to, to teach young about the young people about the culture, about the history, and and all of that. Okay. Um, if you had a moment to, to talk to all the students or just the kids in on the island of Oahu, what advice would you give them to be ex successful in life? <coughs> well, a, a couple of things that I would do. I think that uh, first of all, prepare yourself. Okay, that means getting an education. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to go to college. You know, you might, I mean, plumbers and, and, and carpenters, they, they make a pretty good living, you know. Uh, so it doesn't mean you have, to be, you have to go to college, but you should prepare yourself for any field that you think you might want to get into. And the other, the other thing is that I, I think uh, you need to shoot high, aim high. Aim high because you won't know uh, whether you can achieve your, your dream unless you try. And in my case, for example, uh, I nearly flunked out of Farrington High School. I know I wasn't a great student. I used to mess around a lot, you know. I had three cards when I was in high school, and, uh, you know, I, um, uh, I just didn't study. And uh, I, nearly, uh, I nearly, nearly flunked out in my senior year. But uh, later on, of course, I became I understood the, 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 uh, the uh, importance of education. And uh, when I was in high school, although I wanted to be a lawyer, back then I didn't think it was possible for me. But as I got more education and as I you know, got more experience and I was older, of course, I went to the mainland, then I saw, okay, I got a shot at it. And I went to UCLA, got my, my degree there, when it got into law school, and, uh, and and that's about all I wanted was to be a, a, a good lawyer, and I finally made it. Uh, but when I was in high school, I didn't think I could. You know, I kept on shooting high, yeah. and I, you know, I I got into politics by accident. Actually, uh, I never intended to have a political career because when I was a, a lawyer, I. Uh, <laughs> I used to have long hair, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> real long. <laughs> and uh, I used to wear, uh, when I went to trial, you know, to represent my clients, I used to wear a white suit with red pinstripes. <laughs> and sometimes I would wear a red tie and I, I'd have uh, high heel shoes. Uh, I was not made out to be a, a, a politician. But I believe that nobody gets from here to there without somebody helping you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, that, in this case, the, guy, the person who got me started in politics was our first, uh, well, he wasn't the first governor, uh, but was uh, really, I think, our, our greatest governor, uh, John Burns. And he got me into politics uh, by appointing me to a commission. And I, did, I never talked to him. I, I didn't know him. But he was the kind of politician who thought it was really important to, to reach out and make sure that all of the different ethnic groups were represented somehow in the state government, you know? And the guy was an ins inspiration to me because uh, by appointing me to this commission, he got me started, and uh, then I, I, I got into politics. Well, I'm sure with a suit like that, everyone would remember you. <laughs> yeah. That's always well, a good thing. Well, you ought to see some of the, the, the pictures when I was younger. <laughs> they used to call me Prince Valiant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when, when you first got into politics, was your heart in it, or what made you really get the desire to really want to do it? 
Well, you know, I always thought that to be a politician, you had to have certain kinds of, you know, uh, qualities, and I didn't think I had it because of the way I, you know, I dress and my, uh, you know, I, I didn't think I had the, uh, the, the temperament to be a, a, a politician. But when I got elected to, uh, appointed to the, the commission, it was the, high, the Hawaii Housing Authority Commission by Governor Burns, I had a chance to watch the, the legislature in action mm -hmm. because we would be called down to testify at the hearings mm -hmm. on behalf of the commission. And when I saw these guys in action, I said, I can do this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can do this. I, I have an education, I have a, I have a degree, I, I think I'm... I think I'm just as smart as these guys, and so that's how I got into it. Okay. Yeah. In such a down economy, what are some of the best ways we can help education? Well, <clears throat> this is a very difficult question because, or uh, a difficult task, because education, public education, uh, takes university and uh, the DOE uh, makes up for maybe about 53% of the state's general fund budget so it takes a big big slice of the pie yeah. so to speak you know and uh, the, the, I think the only way the only thing you can do to improve uh, public education is to uh, first make the teachers and the system more accountable mm. because there is uh, I think uh, uh, ways in in the DOE that can be corrected mm -hmm. so and I, I think it's important to set standards, of not only for the teachers, but for the students, so that when you graduate from a public school, public high school, the diploma that you walk out with means something. And it means something to the people who uh, govern uh, admissions to college and that kind of thing, you know. And they know which schools are the better schools, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, now in a down economy, well, you got to set your priorities, and uh, because the public education takes so much of the the budget, um, everything has to be more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. For the last few months, one of our biggest challenges down in our side of the island was is waiting for a bus since the schedule was cut. What do you think the solution is for restoring the bus system? A new mayor. <laughs> <laughs> they they um, they cut the bus service because that's part of the plan for the rail project. Mm -hmm. They will turn these buses into uh, basically a feeder system. Now, in my proposal, uh, if you're talking about you're not talking about express buses, are you? You're talking about school buses. Yeah, school buses. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you need, then then. Then the, the DOE has to, I think, uh, uh, restore the, the the school bus program, and that means, you know, uh, funding. Um, the city apparently only has express buses there, you know. Uh, so, the, in that sense, the city cannot do a lot for the for the students because it's basically the DOE's bus program that you're talking about. Um, as a student journalist, we're learning the value of fair and balanced coverage. If you're the campaign manager for um, Mr. Caldwell, what is something positive that you could say about him that qualifies him for also mayor? <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice man, you know, uh, and he's and he's an intelligent man. He's he's nice and he's intelligent. I've known Kirk for uh, maybe a, a little more than. 10, 15 years, yeah. Uh, I think he's a good guy. Um, but, uh, but you know, to be the mayor or the governor of the state, I think that you need to look for an individual who is smart and has the courage to do what he thinks is right. Yeah. And, uh, there are many people who, who are in politics who are smart, they got degrees, advanced degrees, uh, but what they lack is sometimes they get too influenced by labor unions, by big business, and they don't have the, the courage to do what is right for the people. 
And I think that's, that's important. Now, I can say that Kirk is a nice guy, and he's smart. And then I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> So I just have one more question for you. You talked about earlier how John Burns was a role model to you, but um, when you were younger, as a student, who was someone with, who was inspirational to you? And to you? Um, I think in, in, in when I was in high school uh, in the 50s, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt was okay. uh, one of my <laughs> idols, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, later on, of course, locally, uh, uh, Governor Burns, you know. Mm -hmm. And to, to a degree, I think uh, when I was growing up, I uh, admired Senator Inouye. Okay. You know. So, but on the national scene, uh, I would say that uh, uh, John Kennedy was uh, really an inspiration to my, my generation. Unfortunately, he only served two years before he was uh, assassinated. But I thought John Kennedy had what uh, uh, too many uh, of our leaders don't have. He, had, he was charismatic. Uh, he could inspire people, you know. He uh, was a good speaker. Yeah, he was a very good speaker. Uh, and uh, Barack Obama has some of that. But uh, w whether he's going to get reelected, I, I don't know. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do you guys have any more questions? No, I don't know. Thank you. Okay, for your well, time. You know, thank yes. you very much, and I wish you all the best of luck in your studies. Yeah, uh, you guys are you're, you're in A grade. Uh, I'm a sophomore. He's in A grade. I'm yeah. the only intermediate high school next year. Okay. Well, I'm glad, you know, I, that I met you folks. People think of Kahuku as mainly football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I found that there are quite a few bright kids there. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Sure. <laughs> thank you. All righty. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Mahalo.